Welcome to our God's Word for Today devotional this morning. And welcome to all of you who are coming or listening to us for the first time. And thank God for the opportunity that you can join us with us this morning in our devotional. Let me read to us our devotional this morning in the book of, of Romans, chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Eloricon, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him will say, and those who have never heard will understand. Paul was an ambitious guy, and he told us here about his ambition to preach the gospel as much as possible to the places where he should go. Paul recognizes himself that he was an instrument of God to be used for God's purposes. And that's why he said in verse 18, Yet I dare not boast about anything except what Christ has done through me, bringing the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I work from among them. I'm reading the New Living Translation of verse 18. Paul was proud of what God has used him to accomplish, that is, bringing the Gentiles to obedience to the gospel. Yet, it's not him, but Christ through the Spirit. He refuses to take personal credit for these accomplishments in his life. It is Christ who has accomplished this work through him. He merely participated in the work of Christ that he was doing. In other words, he was so, he was so fulfilled and he was so um, glad that he became an instrument of God to become the instrument of God to proclaim the gospel. And then he moved on to list how Christ has accomplished his, this work through him. Firstly, he mentions about the word and deed that he, that he did. Paul has used words to spread the good news of salvation through faith in Christ extensively, both near and beyond. Uh, we know that in Romans chapter 10, he expounded there that whosoever believes upon the Lord shall be saved. But how could they believe if they have not heard? And how could they have be heard if nobody will preach to them? How will they hear if nobody will send to them? So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So they must hear the gospel. His deeds have in he will have include included heroic acts of service. He mentioned here um, word and deed. So he mentioned here the miracle signs and wonders that he said they were convinced by the power of miraculous signs and wonders and by the power of God's Spirit. In this way, I have fully presented the good news of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Illyricum. Now, it's important that we will preach the word, but we should also do some good deeds that people will, will be able to know that our message is real. When, in fact, somebody said that we have to preach according to our lives and we use words if it's necessary. So words are not that effective only if we didn't accompany this with good works. So these miracles are evidences of the power of the Holy Spirit. When these groups of people believe in Christ and receive the Spirit themselves. So what does this mean to us today? Let us be encouraged, therefore, that today God still provides the power to, to do the work. He sends us, he, he sends us, and the great, great Commission is still, still uh, binding to us, and we should go. He said, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you, even unto the end of the world. So God's promised presence will be there. So the Lord accomplishes his purposes 
through his ordinary servants like us. Amazingly, Paul also mentioned here about the scope of his travel, his mission travels that began from Jerusalem has reached to Europe, to Illyricum, also known as the Dalmatia. This is a region north and west of Macedonia, and Macedonia is now the modern Greece, and even part of modern-day Croatia. In claiming that he has fulfilled the ministry, he said that I have fulfilled the ministry of delivering the gospel of Christ to all these places, what did he mean? He did not mean that there would be no work that remains to be done there. He means that he did its place exactly what Christ gave him to do. It means that in every place he presented and proclaimed the gospel to them. Yet, even then, the gospel has to be preached over and over again because there are some people who need to hear the gospel more than once, but twice, thrice, and many times. Yet, even when he had this work and deed and all these things that he did, his accomplishments, he did not pat his shoulders and satisfy himself and became complacent. When in fact he said, my ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard rather than where, where a church has already been started by someone else. So we ask this question, is there something wrong with preaching the gospel of Christ in an area where it has already been preached? Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. Number one, people are moving to different places. So in this place, a year from now or two years from now, somebody will be coming in to live in this place. So they need to hear the gospel. And on the other hand, some people also need to hear the gospel more than once. But as somebody said, why preach to places or to people more than once when there are other people in other places who have not even heard even once? So it's logical that Paul has to go to where the, the, the gospel is not yet preached because they need to have the opportunity to hear the gospel. Otherwise, they will not be able to believe the gospel because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, thankfully, in our times today, we have the internet that can reach to the farthest where our feet cannot reach. There are just many restricted places that we cannot go and preach the gospel where missionaries are banned. But the internet, the web, the 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 web um, or the internet or the cyberspace, nobody can ban it. So we thank the Lord for hearing many stories that many out there who are isolated in a sense that they have no opportunity to meet physically a missionary or somebody who will preach the gospel to them, yet they come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ because of internet. So internet is a good tool, but it's also a bad platform because in the internet we can learn and we can see also a lot of, of, of um, wicked things there if we are not careful. Paul quoted Isaiah 52 verse 15 that says, as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. Clearly, this quotation was purposely stated by Paul because the work that he has done around the world has not been ultimately been his work. It's the work of God. It's prophesied by the Lord and the Lord will fulfill it. He is just but an instrument. Hence, he is not taking credit for the results. He has been tasked by God to bring the good news about salvation through faith in Jesus to people who have never heard it before. In Acts 20 verse 24, Paul was already committed so that he said there, but none of these things moved me. Neither count on my life dear unto myself. He was so sacrificial. He did not think that his life is important for his own selfish benefits, but he was willing to pursue the gospel by preaching it, by proclaiming it, 
that many will come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I close this morning, I ask each one of us, what is our ambition in life? What's our, our ultimate passion in life? Are we like Paul? Are we passionate for the glory of God that God will use our, our lives wherever, whatever it is, our simple lives, that the gospel will, will flow in and through us so that others will know. There are many people who need to hear the gospel. I hope that we, like Paul, will have this desire that we are going to go and be an instrument that God can use by life or by deeds and by our lips. And let's pray that God will continue to open doors for us, that we'll be able to proclaim the gospel. Thank God that he's still in the business of saving souls in Jesus' um, my, mighty gospel. So let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word this morning. Thank you that we have seen here the heartbeat and the passion of Paul and help us that we'll emulate his example of being passionate, Lord. Lord, remove any fears or whatever hindrances that can uh, quench the, the passion and the love for you first and foremost and then to the souls, Lord, that need the gospel. Thank you that we can expect the answers of our prayer because this is your will for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.